For more information on tutoring, personalized video solutions, or how to support MOOF University and the production of more videos, check out MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. Now we're going to get into the actual pathways of degrading the amino acids and their carbon skeletons to each of those key products. And we'll start off with the amino acids degraded specifically to pyruvate. So how many amino acids have their carbon skeleton degraded directly to pyruvate? There are six of them and they are threonine, that's one, glycine, that's two, serine, three, tryptophan, four, alanine, five, and cysteine, six. Okay, so one, two, three, okay. So let's see how this works. So threonine actually, it's the major pathway by it, by which it's degraded yields succinyl-CoA, and that's something we'll actually see in another video um, because succinyl-CoA is one of the key products. And that, that pathway is the major pathway. But here in the minor pathway, um, via threonine dehydrogenase, the threonine can be converted into two amino three ketobutyrate, where we're um, basically just oxidizing this carbon right here, the purple one there, to um, the carbonyl. And in that process, we make an NADH. Okay, so this is the minor pathway by which three is degraded. Okay, so we get this two amino three ketobutyrate. And in this next reaction, that two amino three ketobutyrate, we add a coenzyme A. And that coenzyme A gets stuck right here, gets attached right there to make it so that this portion comes off as an acetyl-CoA that we see here. So two of those carbons go that way. And the rest of the molecule up here ends up becoming glycine. That becomes glycine there. So now we've got glycine. And glycine can go a number of directions. Notice it's got an arrow coming out of it here and here and also here. So let's go, and since this is a, this is a video on um, degrading the amino acids to pyruvate. Let's go down this way first, and we'll show the other pathways later. So glycine can be turned into serine, um, but we need to add a carbon to do that. We have a two carbon molecule here in glycine and a three carbon molecule here in serine. So how do we do that? We need a carbon from somewhere. Well, we're gonna get a carbon from a from N5, N10, methylene tetrahydrofolate. So the carbon is coming in as a methylene group. So here, this T methylene THF here, this N5N10 methylene THF is a one carbon donor. And it's going to add that one carbon. Notice I've got that in orange there. It's going to add this orange carbon here. Okay, to get that hydroxymethyl group there. And so this enzyme, the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is serine hydroxymethyl transferase. And that would be familiar if you watch the video on one carbon transfer conversions for tetrahydrofolate. So I suggest that you watch that video um, and that series really, if you haven't um, already, before you continue watching this series. Um, so that gives us serine. Okay, and that serine can undergo the uh, serine dehydratase reaction to basically get rid of this OH group and the amino group here and the alpha hydrogen. And that gives us pyruvate. Okay, so we're good as far as threonine, glycine and serine giving rise to pyruvate. Okay. Now, um, tryptophan over here to the left. It's got 11 carbons. So we wouldn't really think about something that that big giving rise to pyruvate, but it does because it's split kind of where this red line is here to into a top portion and that bottom portion of the molecule. And this top portion ends up um, in alanine down here. And we'll get to that in just a second. And this other portion uh, goes elsewhere as we will see later. It goes elsewhere. Okay. So, uh, and the splitting of that of that tryptophan is occurs in multiple steps. But the point is that this portion up here, like I said, ends up as alanine. And so that alanine, these three carbons, and really this whole portion came from tryptophan. 
and alanine is the alpha amino acid version of the alpha keto acid that is pyruvate. And so in order to turn this alpha amino acid into this alpha keto acid, all we need is a transamination reaction catalyzed by alanine aminotransferase. And that of course will require pyro pyridoxal phosphate as a cofactor. And the amino group just ends up attached to alpha ketoglutarate producing glutamate. And since that amino group is now gone, we end up with pyruvate. So the carbons in the tryptophan ended up in alanine and, and, and eventually in pyruvate. Okay. So that covers nearly all the amino acids giving rise to pyruvate. The last one is cysteine here, and you'll notice that they're very similar in structure. All you really need to do is get rid of this thiol group and this amino group, and you've got pyruvate. So, um, and this could occur via several, pot several potential paths. Um, but basically, you just got to remove the uh, the thiol group, and then re remove the uh, the amino group right, as an NH4 plus, okay. and you'll end up with pyruvate. Okay, so that's pretty much it as far as the amino acids giving rise to pyruvate. I do want to go back up though, um, and talk a little bit about the other other uh, places that glycine can go. So glycine can also be turned into glyoxalate over here um, in this uh, D amino acid oxidase reaction. So we're going to oxidize th this carbon right here of glycine, or oxidative deamination here. We're removing this, uh, this amino group and we're oxidizing that carbon as well. So it's an oxidative deamination. Um, to give glyoxalate and glyoxalate can be further oxidized to oxalate um, by hepatic lactate dehydrogenase. Okay. Okay. So that's an alternative pathway for glycine to go to go through. Uh, glycine can also be um, cleaved. We'll have an, we can have an oxidative cleavage um, by gly, glycine cleavage enzyme. What it'll do is it'll basically take this uh, carboxyl group of glycine and it'll be cut off as a carbon dioxide. And the uh, the amino group will also come off with the alpha hydrogen as an ammonium ion. And that process can give us an NADH, which of course can be used for energy. Um, and the this carbon, this carbon can be tacked on to THF to produce and 5 and 10 methylene THF, which can be used to supply one carbon transfer reactions. Okay. Um, so that enzyme that would catalyze that reaction is glycine cleavage enzyme, but it could also be called, uh, it's also called glycine synthase if the reaction is run in the reverse. Okay, going from these guys and this methylene back towards glycine. Okay. All right. So that was kind of an aside, but that's basically how all these amino acids can give rise to pyruvate. And of course, pyruvate can then go through the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex and eventually through the TCA cycle, we can get a bunch of NADHs, FADH2s, and GTPs. And of course, that's all energy. Okay. Hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with friends. Thank you and happy studying.